Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. A very exponential equation. Kind of like a tower. But not an infinite tower. We have x to the power x to the power x equals 2 to the power negative root 2. You've probably seen problems where we have x to the power x on the left hand side and we use Lambert's w function sometimes to solve those problems or different methods. You can log both sides so on and so forth. But what about when you have this x to the power x to the power x? By the way, we could also use another notation to express this, right? We could put a little 3 to the left and above of the x, which would basically mean uh, tetration, right? Anyways, so how do we solve for x in a problem like this? Can we use Lambert's w function again? I doubt it, but correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it's going to work nicely. But again, I could be wrong. So we'll use another approach. And I'm also going to talk about the solutions. Like how many solutions are there? Take a guess at this point. Because when you think about 2 to the power negative root 2, it's kind of like a small number, right? Don't you think? Because we have a negative power and root 2 is greater than 1. So it's kind of like maybe 2 to the power negative 2. Obviously, it's uh, greater than that, I think, right? Uh, so if you had 2 to the power negative 2, that would be 1 fourth, right? Think about it. It's going to be like a fraction, but a rational number. Okay, great. So let's see how we can solve a problem like this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the right-hand side into something that looks like the left-hand side. Instead of x, though, I'll be using a constant so that when we get something like this, x to the power x to the power x equals c to the power c to the power c, where c is a constant, a known number, then we can directly say x equals c is a solution, right? But the million dollar question is, is that the only solution? And how can you tell? What do you need to look at? So on and so forth. A lot of quick questions, right? Anyway, so I'll try to talk about those. And now let's see how we can get that number. So what is that magical number c? So we're going to manipulate our expression to get that c, okay? So here's what I'm going to do first. x to the power x to the power x equals 2 to the power negative root 2. I'm going to start by writing 2 to the power negative 2. 2 to the power, excuse me, sorry about the noise. 2 to the power negative root 2. I'm going to write it as 2 to the power 2 to the power... Uh, or just write the root, negative root 2 as 2 times negative root 2 over 2. Okay, you might be questioning, like, where does this come from? Obviously, when you know the solution, it's kind of easier to manipulate. Right? Obviously, you just have to work backwards. That's what it is about. How could someone come up with this path? Uh, that's a good question. So why did I do this? Because I want to put this 2 inside and leave the negative root 2 over 2 outside. Because negative root 2 over 2 is actually going to be more helpful than having a root 2 in the exponent. So next step would be writing this as 2 to the power 2 to the power negative root 2 over 2. And as you know, 2 to the power 2 is equal to 4. Great. Let's go ahead and do that. And now, let's use properties of negative exponents. How? When you have a to the power negative x, or I should probably use another variable, Let's say you have something like a to the power negative b. You can write it as 1 over a to the power b. Make sense? And when you multiply these two things, you get a to the power 0, which should be 1, right? Okay. So we can basically invert this, one over, write it as 1 over 4, the reciprocal, and make the exponent positive. That's how the rule works. Make sense? Cool. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter whether you write it like this or like this, it will be the same thing. But I prefer to write it that way for now because it'll be more helpful uh, in the long run, okay? So where do I go from here? Notice that I was able to get a nice base because if the solution is irrational, I don't think we're gonna get something nice like this. So I'm hoping that the exponent, uh, I mean the, the solution is rational. So I'm kind of making an assumption. Again, going backwards, it's easy. Or, I mean, come on, it's straightforward. You already know it. So, here's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on root 2 over 2 and try to write it as a rational to a rational power. They don't have to be the same numbers at this point because we can always 
manipulate like for example let's say i got something like 1 over 8 to the power 1 over 60. i'm just making it up by the way that's not the correct answer but i'm just telling you and let's say if you put it on top of 1 fourth right something like this we could kind of play around with this in some cases of course when it's, when it's possible kind of write this as one half to the second power and then kind of put the two here, so on and so forth. So there's a, there are ways to manipulate it, even though the base and the exponent are not the same. When I say base and exponent, I'm basically talking about this number when written as base to the power exponent. Make sense? Okay, let me clarify. So I'm gonna take root two over two and try to write it as some number a to the power b, where a and b are rational. Make sense? Okay, you know how we can do it? Easy. If you think about root 2 over 2, it's actually square root of 1 half. And you can get that if you didn't see it. Just take root 2 over 2, multiply it by root 2 over 2. It's kind of like rationalizing the numerator, which is something we don't normally do. But these two are going to give you a 2, and that's going to give us... Wait a minute. What did I do? Okay, I multiplied it by itself. Okay, that kind of proves it, but anyways, I, that wasn't my intention. But as you can see here, when you multiply this, you get 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So it's the square root of 1 half, yes. But there's another way to look at it. You can go ahead and write it down, uh, root 2 over 2. And then you can kind of write it as root 2 over root 4, and then that becomes uh, 1 half. Or you can uh, do what is called rationalizing the numerator, multiply by root 2 over root 2. This will become 2, it'll cancel out, leaving us with 1 over root 2, which is the square root of 1 over 2, because this is the square root of 1. Anyways, I, I guess this would be a lot easier, so why don't we go with that? I tend to complicate things, so that's kind of what I usually do. All right, so what does that give us, though? Well, it gives us the following. What is the square root of something? It's 1 half to the power 1 half. Great, so when you plug it in, it's gonna look like this, one fourth to the power one half to the power one half. And the reason why this parentheses there is because it's gonna look confusing and also it kind of emphasizes the fact that the exponent is this one, not one half only, okay? Make sense? I hope it does. Anyways, so that's not good though, you know why? Because it's not C to the C to the C, but don't worry about it. Like I said earlier, we can fix it, right? We could probably write this as maybe one half to the second power and then to the power one half to the power one half. But then when you take the two here, that's gonna give you two times that. That's not gonna be helpful. So that's not the right approach. We have to manipulate it differently. And here's how. One half to the power one half can be written as follows. One half is actually the square root of one fourth. So we can kind of write it as one fourth to the power one half, which is one half, and then that to the power one half. Now what's the square root of one fourth? It's one half, so this, wait a minute, that wasn't my intention. Like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm confusing myself constantly. My intention was, yes, multiply these two things and now you get one fourth to the power one fourth. Great, now we got the following. X to the power, X to the power, X equals one fourth to the power one fourth to the power one fourth. And from here, it follows that x equals one fourth is a solution. But the million dollar question again is, is that the only solution? Go ahead and take a look at the graph of x to the power x to the power x, and you're gonna realize, because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.